Hello, everyone. There are concerns over why those characters were the only ones included in the last sequence, even though The Walking Dead. The ones who live did have numerous incredible appearances. Rick and Michon's exciting spin-off finally came to an end after six exciting episodes. And while there were a number of major talking points, the huge reunion was by far the most influential event on the show to far. Rick vanished from The Walking Dead in Season 9, leaving fans to wonder what happened to him for over six years. When Mitchell left the show in Season 10 to look for him, their reunion seemed inevitable. In addition to giving the series the much-needed Rick and Mitchon material that had been lacking over the years, the ones who live also offered a touching resolution. The ones who live's conclusion included Judith and RJ, who made a guest appearance and brought the Grimes family back together after years apart. Rick had never seen his son RJ before, and this moment gave him the chance to meet Judith as an adult. Though this tender moment had been long in coming, it was unexpected that Rick and Michon did not reconcile with the other primary survivors in the epilogue. In The Ones Who Live, Rick and Michon's long-awaited reunion with their kids finally occurred, although it wasn't in the most famous setting, unfortunately. Except then depicting the protagonists surrounded by greenery. The spin-off doesn't provide much information about the setting of the event. It seems that this scenario may have taken place in the Alexandria region, even if the major survivors are now residents of the Commonwealth. Alexandria has played a recurrent role in The Ones Who Live, mostly because Rick, Michon, and Jaddy's know it the best, and the climactic scene benefits from its nostalgia. The community is the one that Rick has contributed most to growing, and Jaddy's even hinted that the CRM might assault Alexandria demonstrating the significance of the community in the spin-off. Considering that Rick and Michon have to struggle to keep every Alexandrian alive, it seems sense that the Grimes family would get back together on the edges of the city. Since there are no other Commonwealth characters in the final scene, and the meeting place had to be somewhere a helicopter could land, the scene doesn't take place inside any notable communities, based on the information available. It appears the Grimes family reunion happened somewhere close to Alexandria. The absence of characters when Rick gets off the helicopter is unexpected considering the significance of his homecoming. But there are a few potential explanations. Rick purposefully decided to keep the cast of his reunion to a minimum, and actor availability could have played a part. Due to the large ensemble of The Walking Dead, there are many actors that are actively participating and have a variety of tasks to oversee. This makes it hard to bring everyone back, and it would be odd to have a random cast of folks get back together with Rick. Rather, the Grimes family was the exclusive center of the brand. The sequence with Rick and Michon's children is especially poignant since the spin-off was about both of them, even if Rick's return is one of the greatest events in the franchise's history. Just as crucial as Rick finally getting to meet her kids was Michon's reunion with them, which explains why only Judith and RJ made an appearance in the climactic scene. Restricting these reunions makes logical, especially in light of the indications of a possible Walking Dead crossover series. Rick's return was only briefly explored by the ones who live, but a crossover might bring the whole ensemble back for a very touching and bittersweet reunion. Even while it makes sense to see Rick get back together, with all of his former comrades. Some of these reunions seem to have taken place off-screen. Rick seems to be the subject of Carol's radio conversation with Darrell Dixon, suggesting that she had previously met him during his CRM escape. Similarly, the fact that Maggie and Negan's spin-off occurs years after the ones who live implies that they could also be aware of Rick's reappearance. Maggie is still in charge of the hilltop. But Negan's circumstances are a little more complicated. Because of her affiliation with the Commonwealth, Maggie would have probably learned about Rick's return and hurried to visit him. Negan had departed the Commonwealth and was no longer a part of the core gang in Dead City. It's unknown precisely when this occurred, but the fact that he was absent from The Walking Dead's flash-forward conclusion raises the possibility that he wasn't alive when Rick returned. In any case, there should be an on-screen reunion, 
and even the ones that are said to have already occurred, may still get attention in a crossover. It's difficult to tell from The Walking Dead's narrative precisely who Rick has reconnected with at this time, although there have undoubtedly been many off-screen reunions. Season 9 Premiere of Walking Dead Rick Michon and Judith The poignant last sequence of The Ones Who Live offers the Grimes family a profound and significant conclusion to their tale, and it heavily emphasizes how crucial Rick's family was to his escape. Rick gives Judith's statement, that she didn't want him to be alone her response. I thought I was, but then I realized, I wasn't. This little sentence demonstrates the significance of Michon's return in his life. He had all but given up hope of escape when Michon discovered him. But it drew him back from a dark place, and reminded him he still had a family out there. In The Walking Dead, there are additional allusions to Michon's last moments. Judith informs Michon, you got him back, to which she responds, you told me to. This alludes to their last conversation in season 10, in which Judith offered Mitch on permission to look for Rick. In addition, RJ asks Rick whether he is the courageous guy that Mitch on described him as to RJ when she told him about him, saying, I am, but maybe you can call me dad, in response to his kid. Rick shows that the family is prepared to move on. The series has a history of using its own name as a catchphrase. In Season 5, Rick told the gang, We are the Walking Dead. This dismal attitude represented Rick's state of mind at the time, which was also mirrored in his first thoughts in The Ones Who Live. The last scene of the spin-off, however, contradicts this, and shows that people aren't really the Walking Dead. Rather, the strong focus on family and love implies that mankind still exists and that there is hope for the reconstruction of the world in the future.